So with our dovetails done, we're almost ready for the big glue up. Got a few things to take care of first. First thing we're going to do is tackle our fixed shelf with the through tenants. Adds a really cool look to the case. In addition, I got a great trick for hinge mortises. We're going to knock out six sets before you can blink an eye. And when it does come to the glue up, I'll show you some tips for getting square and taking some of the stress out of it. Stick around. We're bringing some of our most popular woodworking content right here to our YouTube channel, starting with this, Mike Pekovich's Hanging Tool Cabinet Video Workshop Series. If you want to build along, we've got links to the plans below. And if you like this type of in-depth content, head on over to findwoodworking.com and sign up for a free two-week trial of our unlimited membership. You'll get access to over 75 of these long-form video workshop series and honestly, a whole lot more. First thing I'm going to do is cut the tenons for the shelf. I started by making the shelf exactly the same length as the top and the bottom. Then I'm using the marking gauge set up to the same distance I set my dovetails for to scribe the shoulders for the tenons. After that, I'll lay out the tenon locations in pencil just as a rough guide for cutting on the table saw. These layout lines aren't really critical because I'm going to be scribing to fit. I just want it visually even so I won't worry too much about it. Okay, so I'm going to cut my tenons on the table saw. I've got a rip blade in here with a flat top grind. It's going to give me a really nice flat cut. So with the same blade and the saw, I'm going to set up my rip face to cut just a shallow shoulder on each face. So to make this cut, I'm attaching a sacrificial fence and burying the blade in it. That way I can run the workpiece by it, taking a shallow cut. This is a lot safer than having the blade out and running the workpiece between the blade and the fence. The shallow shoulder will help us out in a few ways. First, it lets me hand plane the surface without affecting the thickness of the tenon. Second, once I cut away the waste, it gives me a really solid baseline for paring right to the baseline with a chisel. And finally, if there is any gaps in the joint, that shoulder is going to hide any gaps on the inside face. I'll take care of most of the waste on the bandsaw. Now I could go back to the router to remove the rest right down to the baseline, but you know what? A chisel is going to take care of it really quick. This is where that shallow shoulder really comes in handy. I can see the chisel right up against it. I'm chopping in, undercutting a little bit, so I'm only going to go halfway down. Now I flip the board and finish up from the other face. On the ends, I want to be more careful because if I were to undercut here, I'd end up with a V-shaped gap on the ends. So I'm first going to establish a deeper shoulder on the ends and then chisel away in the center. Now I have a really clean straight shoulder on the three outside faces and I'm slightly undercut in the center of the joint. All right, everything's cleaned up. I can start laying out my mortises in the case sides. The way I'm going to do that is the first thing I did was I clamped both sides together, inscribed a line on the back edge equal to the bottom of the shelf. I'm going to set the shelf in place aligned with the back edge, just make some tip marks. Now I can go back to my pencil line with my knife, inscribe just at the location of my tenons. Now that that's done, here comes the fun part. I'm simply going to stand up the shelf line flush with the back edge of the case and with my scribe line. Then I'm going to scribe around the other three sides with a knife. Now I'll go ahead and lay out the opposite side. All right, I can go to the drill press, drill out most of the waste. We'll chop these things square. You notice I'm not really banging hard on the chisel. I'm actually starting from the center, removing that big block of waste between the drilled out holes. 
From there, I'm really just paring back to my scribe lines. This way, the hole doesn't tend to grow and end up really gappy by the time I'm done. So I've got the joint where it fits going in from the outside a little bit and coming in from the inside a little bit, not all the way through. This is really common, typically it's because those mortises are slightly offset. The natural thing to do is to work from the inside until the joint fully seats. The problem with this is you're going to create gaps at the outside of the joint exactly where we don't want them. Here's a trick. Fit the shelf from the outside in. Once it's fully seated, you can rotate it around, put it in the proper direction. It's going to look really nice from the outside. On the inside, where there are any gaps, they're going to be hidden by that little shoulder we cut on the table saw earlier. So with our case joinery done, we're almost ready for glue up. The last task is to run a rabbit on the inside edge of our sides and to rip our top, bottom, and shelf to their final widths. I'll do that on the table saw. Okay, I've got my blades set up for my rabbit. On the inside of my sides, I'm first going to make the cut that establishes the width of the rabbit. I'm going to raise the blade up, and at the same setting, I'm going to rip my top, bottom, and shelf to width. Finally, I'm going to rotate the side, raise the blade to finish up the rabbit. Now there's one last task I'd like to take care of before glue up. That's cutting the mortises for the hinges in the case sides and the doors. I've got a great way to do that on the table saw before I glue the parts together. The key is I size my hinge to the thickness of my stock. That's not a coincidence. That means I can cut my hinge mortise all the way through instead of cutting a U-shaped channel. The table saw can handle that really well. The key to the technique is a setup block which does away with almost all of the layout. All you need to do is take a square and set it to the length of your hinge. Then you can use that to set your table saw fence in order to cut a spacer block. So what I'm left with now is a spacer block exactly the length of my hinge minus the width of my saw curve. I can use this to set up stop blocks on a rip fence for a perfectly sized mortise. Grab a scrap block to test the width of your spacer. You'll need a couple stop blocks and some clamps. Put your sled in place and raise the blade to the thickness of your hinge. Go ahead and clamp a stop block in place. Here's the key. Put your scrap in place. Now put the spacer against it before clamping the second stop block against that. Remove the spacer, make a cut at each end, hog out the waist, and check the fit. It fits a little bit loose. It's really easy to fix. I just set up my rip fence and take a shaving off my stop block. Now if the mortise was too tight, that's easy too. Just put a piece of tape on the side of your spacer, try another test cut, I bet you'll dial it right in. So I've attached an extra fence onto my crosscut sled with a cleat on one end. I can now set up my workpiece and my stop block, start cutting some hinge mortises. My cleat is set up to hit one end. I'll put my spacer block in, add a stop block, and I'll be good to go. I'm going to replace this squishy clamp with a C-clamp for a little extra holding power. All right. I can do all the hinge mortises for all the outside hinges on both the door sides and the case sides. The second setup will handle the guy in the center. To hug out the waist between the cuts, move the workpiece into the blade incrementally, just enough to contact, slide it back and forth to remove the waist, a little bit forward, slide it back again. Repeat until you're all the way through the mortise. To cut the center hinge mortise, loosen up the auxiliary fence, put your workpiece in place, and slide both until the tick mark lines up with the kerf and the saw blade. Screw it in place. Attach the stop block using your spacer block, and you're good to go. So 
So we got six sets of hinge mortises, all of them perfectly aligned. So now we're ready to glue up the case after a little surface prep. So in addition to planing, scraping, or sanding all of your parts, we have to deal with the ends of the dovetails. Because I'm leaving these proud, I want to chamfer and soften the edges before I glue everything together. I don't want to go too far because they only protrude a heavy 32nd from the sides. I don't want that bevel to extend down into the case side. We'll have gaps all over the place. The shoulder plane gets right in those tight gaps between the tails. With the edges broken, I can hand plane the end grain without risk of tear out. One final bit of housekeeping is to drill some holes that'll secure some shelves in the doors. I'll install those after I glue it up. It's nice to get the holes in first though. When all those parts are done, I'm going to pre-finish the ends and the outside faces of the case parts with shellac. It dries really quick. Any glue squeeze out is going to come off easily and it won't show up and mess up our finish. The only thing I'm really careful about is on the inside where the joints are, I'm being careful to avoid putting shellac where there's going to be a glue surface. I'm only going to be putting glue right on the pins or on the tenons of the through shelf so that all the glue, when I put the thing together, is driven to the inside of the case instead of the outside. I'm putting just a little glue on the top and bottom of the tenons, but really the important glue surface there is on the sides of the tenons. Because top and bottom you're really contacting the end grain of the sides. There's not a whole lot of glue strength there. Try not to use a lot of clamping pressure and clamping up dovetails because it really doesn't add any strength to the joint. I just want to make sure everything's fully seated. One thing I am really concerned about though is that I'm gluing the case up square. To help me out with that, I'm going to use my back, which I've already pre-cut to put it in place, help me square things up. If you notice my back is a little bit short. That's because I actually cut it in two pieces with an angled cut. I'm screwing the big half to the back of the case. The lower portion of the back is getting screwed to the wall. It will act like a cleat to support the case. It'll make hanging the thing up on the wall a lot easier later. So I'm gonna make sure this is really firmly attached to the case. I'm gonna use a nail gun just to tack it in place, square up the case, make sure it's everything where it wants to be. Then I'll go ahead and uh, drive some screws in there. So the door boxes go together just like the case, except with just a little bit less stress. I'm still keeping the glue just on the pins, again driving that to the inside of the doors. So we've got 44 and 3 sixteenths and 44 and 3 sixteenths. That means I've got a square door box. I've got a nice square case. Everything should come together really nice. I'll have one more chance to fine tune the fit of the doors to the case when I add the frame and panel fronts. We're going to handle that in the next episode. Come back then.